I'm Michael Davis with Cross Robotics. Today, we're gonna to be working on the Universal Robots Model UR3 doing a joint replacement of the elbow joint. I'm gonna take you step by step through the process. First thing you wanna do is remove the blue cap so that you can access both the wiring for the joint and the manual brake release. Now, all of the joints for the Universal Robots do have a uni do have a manual brake release except for the size zero joints, which are the smaller joints. So what you'll do is you'll remove that cap, you'll press on the manual brake release, and then you can position the joint wherever you need it to be for the process. In the next step, we're gonna disconnect the electrical cables. We're gonna disconnect the communication cable as well as the power cable. Before we touch any electrical connections to make or break them, we're gonna connect an ESD wristband to a solid piece of metal. We're gonna remove the communication cable and then we're gonna press the tab on the back of the power cable and remove it. Next, we're gonna take a small flathead screwdriver and gently pry the gasket out from around the joint and then work it out so, so that you can remove it out of your way and then we're gonna slide back this plastic ring. We now have access to all of the screws that are holding the joint in place. These are a size T10. You'll remove all eight screws. Now that we've got all eight screws removed, we're going to slide the counterpart away from the joint. You'll notice that there is a power cable and a communication cable running between the two. You're gonna disconnect that, and then we're just gonna go ahead and set this side aside for now. And then below the joint is a gasket, which we are going to remove and then remove the eight screws as we did in the previous portion. Now that we've removed all the screws, we're gonna slide the joint out of place and guide these cables out. and then set the defective joint aside. Now with these, since they are using Loctite on the screws, what they recommend we do now is use an M3 tap and go through each screw hole, bore, it, bore into it to recreate the threads, as well as to clear out any Loctite that may be remaining. So in essence, you're clearing this out so that you can get the proper torque when you install the new joint. We're gonna go through each of, the, of these holes. Now that we've removed all of the residual thread locker from the threads on the counterpart, we're going to line up the joint with the counterpart, noticing that there is a notch cut in to the joint as well as into the counterpart to assist you with alignment. First, we need to feed the cables back through into the joint. And then we'll line those notches up, making sure that our cable is out of way and that our communication cable is slightly twisted. Press down firmly to seat it all around, checking all of your screw holes are lined up. And then we can go ahead, since we have our ESD cable connected, and reconnect our communication cable and our power cable. Next, we're going to install the eight screws gently. We're not gonna to start to torque them yet. As you'll notice, they are pre-coated with thread locker. What they recommend using in the event that you are using other screws other than the ones they provide is Loctite 648. We're gonna place all eight screws 
into the holes and just barely tighten them. Now that we have all eight screws in place, we're going to tighten them down with a breakaway Torx screwdriver that has been calibrated to 1.3 Newton meters. We're gonna be using a Torx T10 bit. What you wanna do is you wanna do this in a star or a cross pattern to ensure that it seats properly. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and slide our rubber gasket back in place. And then install the new gasket and plastic ring that have been provided with the new joint. So now that we've replaced the joint, we're gonna go ahead and put the counterpart and the wrist back on. First, we're going to reconnect the electrical connections. And then, again, there's gonna be an indentation on both pieces to help you align it. Make sure you get the wires tucked inside of the counterpart so that you don't end up crimping or chafing any of the wires. And then just slide it into place. Now we're gonna take the screws and we're gonna work our way around it tightening each one down loosely, and then torquing in a cross or star pattern as we did with the joint itself. So now that we've got all the screws between the joint and the counterpart tightened down and torqued, we're going to slide the plastic ring into place as well as put the new rubber gasket into place. Lastly, I'm gonna reinstall the blue lid, torquing it down to 0 0.4 Newton meters. And as your last step, you will go in and perform the calibration as described in the service manual. This concludes our instructional video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please check us out online at crossrobotics.com.